Okay, today we're playing a game on Hollywood. The average SR of this game was 2,683, and we will be playing about two-thirds of the game as Moira and about a third of the game as Mercy. And our current team composition is Diva, Zarya, Genji, Farah, Moira, and Zenyatta. So, it is sad because we do not have a Mercy. And we always want to have a Mercy because, yeah, she's still really strong, believe it or not. Still had no balance changes? Yep, she's still really strong. Other than that, there is not very much to say about it, so let's just start the game. That is much too loud. So, a fair bit of the story today... Oh, we are on the console, by the way. I remembered at the start of the video instead of the end of the video for once, it was a good day. We're on the PS4, it looks like, based on the hieroglyphics. So, the crux of today is going to basically be... Uh, we shouldn't really be standing where we're standing right now. Which we will uh, get into more later. It was more obvious on defense than it was uh, on attack. So, we are currently holding left click over this diva the entire time, which is not very good for, if for uh, resource efficiency. And our other healer right now is Zenyatta, so we want to try and be fairly responsible with our resource because... Zenyatta ain't about to suddenly spike heal someone up if they need it. So, you want to, like, let the regen do as much as possible. You don't really want to just, like, hold left-click over somebody unless they are in the middle of a fight or you need them to be healed up very quickly for one reason or another. Like, you're defending and, like, your main tank's, like, half HP and you think they're about to start pushing in. Yeah, you need him healthier quicker, but... If it's not those sort of circumstances, you usually want to, like, let the regen do as much as possible rather than just holding left-click over the person, because that ends up draining your resource quite quickly, and it can be unfortunate, depend because the resource takes a long time to regen, so you don't really want to be frivolous with it. Um, so, currently, not, not good positioning-wise, because we take a very wide berth around this corner into a, uh, a bunch of scary things. And now we decide that we're going to go around this way. <clears throat> and what we basically end up doing is flanking as Moira. Because we come up around the backside and like, ah, oh, yes, mm, we will now flank the Orissa and the May. Moira is like one of the worst flanks in the world because she has such low overall kill potential just rather be like over with your team in most circumstances rather than like going around behind the enemy team and even though a whole team fight happened right there we didn't actually build up that much ult charge off of it which is because usually for moira like you have a team fight like that's basically an ultimate right there in most circumstances so we uh had a fairly low impact on the fight overall but we won the fight so it doesn't matter in the end didn't get punished don't have to learn but um you don't really want to be going behind the enemy team as Moira. You always want to just be hanging out with your team, like right behind your front line. Not being the front line. There is a difference. You want to be with your front line. You don't want to actually be the front line. So now a lot of bombs are flying over here, but we are again like just like draining our resource, which is oh, uh, Diva ends up losing her mech anyway. We do, like, D.Va is getting shot at, so, like, fair enough, it, but then she decides that she's going to go forward as well, and she just ends up dying, which is really sad. So, and then we just end up getting killed by Junkrat, which is really sad, especially because we had fade off cooldown, so there wasn't really any reason we should have died. It's not going to sound very helpful, but dodge better is basically the advice, because, um, the Junkrat's damage is very predictable and quite slow, so... He's, he's just someone you have to pay attention to and avoid his projectiles. And if you get hit, just fade. Because if you get, like, a solid hit off one of the bombs on you, he is probably going to try and throw the mine at you to finish you off. So, just fade, basically. So we've got Coalescence built up, which is cool. We want to use it as early as possible. Because, of course, the benefit of Coalescence is that it charges extremely fast. But, seeing as it charges extremely fast, we have to use it fast, otherwise we don't benefit from the fact it charges quickly. So, Soldier was over here, he wasn't allowed to be doing that. Now, we, here's uh, the, the positioning thing, where we're just sitting right next to the Junkrat the entire time, and we're going over here with him. Moira 
you've got like you got a 20 meter range on your right click you don't need to be close to anybody to actually kill them junkrat would actually very much prefer that we were right next to him because it makes it much easier for him to hit us and we don't really gain anything from being closer to the guy because it's not like we do more damage for being close to him or anything like that so instead of walking with him we should be backing up away from him and then I assume the, the idea with the fade was to try and steal the large health kit and then slide away, but the large health kit wasn't actually even there at the time, so... Just back away from the junk rat. Moira, you can be really far away from people as Moira and still be hurting them, and... Most people would rather Moira was closer to them, because Moira doesn't gain anything from being closer to the person, but... It makes it a lot easier to hit Moira if she's right next to you. So, just let back up. And if you... Fade is a fantastically forgiving ability, because you can figure out that you're too close to somebody, and then just, oh, back up, fade away, no problem. So, now we're back, we're going to use Coalescence right here, which is fair enough, there's a team fight happening, so that's basically the time to use it. You don't always need to use it because a team fight's happening, quite often I'll use Coalescence before the team fight actually starts, and then we'll go in with Coalescence, because it has the, um... Benefit of being aggressive and defensive, so you can, like, use it to damage the enemy team and heal your team as they're advancing in. And then just, like, helps get the team fight started, and you can usually kill somebody off of it. Their Mercy is currently using Valkyrie. I'm speaking from the perspective of a, co of a PC player, so I don't know how, how easy this is, strictly speaking, on the console. But I find that Coalescence is one of the better ultimates for actually killing a Mercy out of her Valkyrie, because... Coalescence's beam is fucking huge, so it's not that hard to actually, like, track the Mercy with Valkyrie and actually kill the Mercy. It's n still no, like, Tac Visor or Deadeye or anything like that, but I find Coalescence to be pretty good at killing Mercy out of a Valkyrie. But that is from the perspective of a, of a PC player. I don't know if it's as easy on the console, because I've never actually played it on the console. So, there goes the cat. The cat, nope. Cat's not leaving. Cat's gonna sit right there in front of the microphone, thus destroying my audio quality. But there he goes now. So, um, we're still winning the fight, which is good. You generally do want to be winning the fight after all. Our team aren't even really taking that much damage, surprisingly enough. We end up getting caught on a bunch of geometry, which is really unfortunate. We end up having to go a long way away to actually heal up. Which is sad, and the sad side effect of having a uh, Zenyatta as your other healer is, yeah, you know, he's probably not going to heal you that often. So we get caught in a lot of geometry, which is just really awkward. Um, try to know where all the random shit is on the map that you can get hung up on, which is hard on in Overwatch, because there is a lot of random geometry in the map you can get hung up on. But, like, a lot of playing Moira is being able to... It's like kind of like Tracer-esque, where you want to be able to fade in a direction without actually looking at it. So you want to be able to, like, the door... Man, I, it would be really nice if this drawing pro program actually fucking functioned correctly, wouldn't it? Mm, yes. So, like, the like the doorway over there, you want to be able to, like, do the zigzag through the doorway without actually uh, looking. And... Now, there's a lot of random geometry on this map, uh, or in this game, in general, but, like, you want to be able to fade in a direction without looking at it, and without getting hung up on the geometry, obviously, so try and uh, remember where the random stuff is on the map, which is not necessarily the most helpful advice. So, fortunately, Junkrat has no sense of object permanence, so he just sort of didn't know what was going on. We step on the trap. We cannot get out of the trap with Fade. And he's just like, I don't understand. Where did she go? I don't see her. Just doesn't just doesn't suspect a damn thing, even though we can't have gone anywhere. Um, stepping on Junkrat's trap is awkward because it, the Fade doesn't actually break you out of the CC. So... <clears throat> Which is weird when you think about it in relation to, like, Graviton, right? Because you can fade out of Graviton, but you you can fade out of <clears throat> a miniature black hole. But you cannot fade out of a metal trap. It doesn't make that much sense, does it? Um, it's awkward, though, because fade doesn't get you out of it. So, 
the natural fight or flight instinct is like to use fade immediately because you don't want to take damage, basically. But you usually want to wait until either the trap's about to end or you think you're about to take the big burst of damage in the trap. Because even though you can't move, you're still invulnerable while you're using fade. So just using it immediately upon stepping in the trap is usually not a great idea because you still usually end up taking a bunch of damage. So you want to use it either when the trap is about to wear off, so you can, like, actually get the movement out of Fade, or when you think a big chunk of damage is coming at you. Like, you see Junkrat suddenly turn and look right at you, you Fade to dodge the bombs and stuff like that. You... The natural instinct is like, I stepped on the trap, shit, Fade. Fight or flight instinct is uh, a trap in many cases. So we have just for faded forward way, way too aggressively, and we have been punished for it. I have no issue with you fading forward aggressively. I think, in general, Moira players are too afraid to fade forward aggressively and try and kill people. However, what we did was just fade forward aggressively into the middle of the street on Hollywood in front of their entire team, while not quite our entire team was actually there, so we just end up getting killed for it. So that's just way too aggressively. Way too aggressively moved. We faded way too aggressively. English is a stupid language, okay? So Genji's just killed their entire team and got play of the game, so that's great. We didn't even have to actually do anything over here. Amazing. Now we've almost got coalescence built up as well, which is nice. We do do some stalling out on this checkpoint, but we get there in the end. We actually get there with like a minute and a half left on the time. Like, it's quite surprising for the third checkpoint on Hollywood, which is... In my opinion, the third checkpoint on Hollywood is the hardest one on the map. A lot of people really hate the first checkpoint, honestly, like, I think the third checkpoint is such a nightmare, because it's just like this long, narrow hallway where you really have no options as the attacking team other than to try and funnel down this long hallway, and the enemy team can just be like, oh yeah, there's just like a soldier and a bastion sat way at the other end of the ramp, and there's not much you can do to stop them. Unless you're gonna, unless somebody wants to play like fucking Widowmaker or something, you know, it's really awkward. I hate the third checkpoint. So we have got coalescence, and we do want to use it as soon as possible. We're just gonna use it right now, which is fair enough. However, unfortunately, a bunch of our team end up dying, and their soldier is using Tac Visor. Coalescence is unfortunately not strong enough to beat Tac Visor, so. We should not still be fighting at this point because four members of our team are dead right now. So we should not even be this far up because the risk of death is quite high and we really don't want to die for no reason. Zarya ends up dying, unfortunately. Um, we aren't... Um, we actually like hitting her with this. I really wish that Moira's healing beam had better feedback on if you're actually like touching them. So don't do this. Where you're like way out of range of the person you're trying to heal, but you walk forward holding down the left click or the healing beam anyway. It's not a left click on a controller, but you get the idea. Because while you're walking up to the person, it's just doing nothing. And you've only got nine seconds of charge on that. Like, you don't want to be frivolous with it. I, I catch myself doing it all the time, like walking forward after someone, like holding down the button. It's really bad for resource management. Like, don't do that because you just end up wasting a ton of your resource. And that's how you end up being in awkward positions where, you know, now a fight's broken out, but I have nothing to heal with, so. So Zenyatta's decided to use uh, Transcendence as we go in. Oh no, they're in the Graviton. Oh no, Self-Destruct. Oh no, Dragon Blade also. And that's the story of how we got the checkpoint. You only gotta get the one good alt combo in, and that's how you do it. The classic fallback strategy of Overwatch. Can't take the checkpoint? Sorry, if we just throw six ultimates into the checkpoint, we will probably capture it. Got Coalescence, just use it. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully this is the last fight of the round, so there's no better time to use it, frankly. And we do end up taking it. It gets a little bit scary. Like, you know, we're starting to get a little bit low. We should be healing the Zarya right now, because the Zarya is in critical HP. And... We do walk over Junkrat's body, which is bad awareness, basically, because uh, dying to Junkrat's passive is really sad. Um, we should be trying to heal the Zarya, though, because she's in critical HP. It's very easy playing Moira to get wrapped up in doing damage. I, know, I, I do it all the time. I love doing damage. I want to kill fools. But Moira is a healer, so number one priority is healing people, not doing damage. You're meant to be healing people first and then doing damage secondary to that, so... Should have been healing the Zarya rather than trying to do damage. 
Probably didn't make much difference there. Also, we were too close, really, anyway. That's how we ended up, like, tripping over Junkrat's body and dying. Um, don't, didn't need to be that close, but also could have just walked around Junkrat's body as well if we were a little bit more aware of the, everything happening around us. So now we will play Moira for a little bit on this round, but then we will change to Mercy. Send off the orb in there, and unfortunately it doesn't get us much ult charge, but it ended up getting us some ult charge, and it ended up helping Tracer die, which is nice, because Tracer just came out of the gate and like immediately died, which is very sad for her. I do not recommend throwing the orb into that doorway unless you know somebody is in there and they can't really get out of there because it just it doesn't end up actually getting the full value out of the damage orb. And that's why the damage orb is so good. It's very easy to do 200 damage with the orb and therefore gain 10% ult charge right off of that. Throwing it into that room, eh, it tends to not get that much because the person can usually just leave. And it's usually better just to, like, chuck it into, like, the body of people over there instead. So, we fade away from... with not much reason. Like, we're not actually being threatened right now, so there's not really anything to fade away from. I'm get We're probably fading in, like, response to the Tracer or something. But, like, nothing's actually happening to us. And we weren't actually being threatened. So instead of fading away like that, we could have healed Zenyatta and maybe he wouldn't have died. Because... Nothing was actually happening to us at the time, so there wasn't really any reason to fade away. So, a fair chunk of our team are currently dead. And this is something we do a lot on this checkpoint, is like... We stand basically with our back to the enemy team's spawn, and therefore the majority of the enemy team usually as well. And we do it again. Do so we do it here, like, same fight? Well, this now we're coming out here just to touch it, basically, and, you know, fair enough, unfortunately, Junkrat's there. But there's a, a sort of fairly baseline thing with the enemy, with uh, positioning, where you don't want your back to be facing the enemy team's spawn, because that's probably where the majority of the enemy team is focused in, and it's where they're going to be reinforcing from if they've lost anybody. So uh, we do a lot of, like, walking that way while facing this direction. And we, like in that fight, we ended up basically sho just showing our back to the Junkrat who was behind us. He ended up not killing us during that moment exactly, and then we ended up coming back out and getting killed. But, usually you don't want your back to the enemy team spawn, because that's where they'll be coming from. And you don't want to be backing up, like we're doing it again right now. Enemy team, they're all behind us right now. We're backing up into them, not even looking at them, and we end up just, like, getting killed. We never even see it happening, even though, like, we know the enemy team is back there, because, like, where else are they going to be? And we just end up backing into them anyway. Don't want to back up into the majority of the enemy team, because that's how you die. Well, that's one of the ways you die anyway. There's a lot of ways to die, but that's one of the easier ways to die. So this fight's going really badly. We've lost this checkpoint. Oh, no, there goes the tire. We shouldn't even come over here to try and contest it, because all that's going to happen is we're going to die, and it's not going to accomplish anything. We end up stalling out the checkpoint for like half a second longer, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, There's no reason for us to have done that. We end up actually kind of baiting D.Va in over as well, and she ends up losing her mech and her life. There was no reason for us to go over there and contest it, because us contesting it will, will achieve absolutely nothing. And we can end up baiting people in, like the diva right there, who ended up dying with us as well. And there's just no reason. They're, we're not going to do anything over there. Also, we end up giving them ult charge because they get to kill us, even though they had no reason to kill us, because we could have just not fought. But they get ult charge off killing us all the same. So here's Tracer. Moira's pretty good against Tracer, because, you know, there's a light lock on the damage beam, which is nice. Again, don't really want to hold left click over the dude. He's, uh, or the healing beam over the dude. He's not actually being threatened right now. And that doesn't have that many hit points either as Genji, so holding the beam over him is unnecessary unless he's in the middle of a fight. Reinhardt should not have been doing what he was doing, and he's ended up dying for it. It's more his mistake than anybody else's, because he should not have been doing what he was doing. And he ended up dying for it. I believe we end up switching after this death right here, which is coming. Uh, you know, it's, once again, we just kind of get exploded randomly. Pretty sure we de we changed to Mercy now. Yeah, we changed to Mercy now. We, uh, I mean, 
If your team doesn't have a Mercy, you should very heavily consider changing to Mercy, because Mercy is still just... really, really strong. One day she may not be strong. One day she may actually be not a basically mandatory pick, but today is not that day. So, we had to do the scary jump across the hangar. Now this is very scary, where we're stuck in the... Didn't their tracer throw a pulse bomb at us? Oh, it got deflected! I was like, what happened? That pulse bomb came right at us, but oh, Genji, it just... Man, we can't even see Genji. Like, we can't even see him, but the deflect hitbox is actually big enough to bounce that back. Genji's actually a hero, because, like, if that pulse bomb actually, like, got in there and killed us, we would lose a lot of momentum right here, but... Good job, Genji. So, big plays parried the, gra the pulse bomb in the graviton. So here we're doing the thing we were doing earlier, where we're backing up into where the enemy team is going to be coming from. And Tracer ends up almost killing us, but then she gets greedy and kills herself. Uh, but... We shouldn't have been backing up that way, because that's backing up into the enemy team, which is very pretty bad. Uh, we decide that we're going to try and blast the Tracer, which is fair enough. You can't always rely on people actually hitting the Tracer, so... Her Junkrat's tire. Junkrat's tire's broken. Tracer's still trying to get us. However, it took her a while. She did get us in the end, but most of her team is actually dead, so her getting us doesn't actually mean anything right now, because the rest of our team is still there. So... Even though she killed us, it took her long enough to kill us that it ends up not really affecting very much. Our team are currently way too far up still, and their spawn is way closer than ours from that position, so... Uh, them trading with us is beneficial, but because we had basically already won the fight, it wasn't the end of the world. So here, we're backing up into where we shouldn't be backing up into again, and I know, we're trying to get to the far, you know, I see that, but... You still got to think about where you're moving into, because we're ending up moving into the back into the enemy team again. And we almost died. Dropped down to 13 hit points. We should have died for that one. Ended up not dying for it, which is great. But we should have died for that one. Got to think about where you're moving. Don't want to be backing up into the enemy team. So here we GA forward, like, way too far. Just, like, cancel that bad boy, because we don't need to be standing right next to him. Um, I don't know if you can change the setting, like, for... GA cancelling on the console, because I've never seen the console menu. But, like, you want to cancel that GA before you actually get there. Mercy's beam is actually quite long, so you don't want to be, like, right next to the person that you're tethered to, usually. You want to be as far back as possible still, so that, like, it's hard for you to die. So we got hit by Junkrat's bomb. At first, fortunately, the enemy team does not do a very good job of finishing us off. So we use Valkyrie right here. I would not use Valkyrie in this position because we basically won this fight already. Because we can see in the kill feed that three people on their team just died. And we use GA kind of the same time it happens, but like a little bit after. There's no, not actually any reason to use GA for this because we've already won the fight. And then Zenyatta ends up using Transcendence at the same time, which is just awkward because that just means we used both support ultimates in the same fight when we had already won the fight as well. And support alts, usually pretty important. So, with the way we're positioning right now, there's like nothing, there's no, no way we really get punished for being over here, because their team can't kill us, really. But, we don't want, we don't want Valkyrie to run out and for us to still be over here. Like, GA back over there before Valkyrie ends, so that you can get out of that place really quickly, because, oh god... We just had to, like, do the slow GA across the entire hangar in front of the enemy team. Like, there's nothing on their team that can actually kill us for hovering over there, but then we do the slow hover across the entire hangar, and we could very easily get killed for that one. And then, oh no, pulled into the Graviton and killed with the Junkrat tire. Mm-hmm. Far is going in. She's trying to get her play of the game. She's going for it. She got a kill. She didn't die. She died. Okay. That's basically what it was expected to happen. If Actually, like, honestly, her getting a kill is pretty good in that situation. So, a very awkward situation where Tracer is trying to kill us, but we also have to hide away from the Graviton, from the Graviton, from the self-destruct. And there's just no good answer to that situation. It's like, well, 
I hide behind cover and Tracer kills me, or I go out and self-destruct kills me. There's no good solution to that situation. It's just fortunate that our team ends up winning the fight anyway, even though we're not there. Sometimes there is you're in a situation where there is not really a great answer. <laughs> it's okay, though. It works out. They don't get control of this checkpoint, by the way. You might have noticed from the fact the replay is almost over at this point. We've almost got Valkyrie up at this point. Like We're going to have it during the final team fight in all likelihood, which is great because Valkyrie is a really, really strong ultimate. Well, almost died to that Junkrat bomb, but not quite. Oh, D.Va almost lost her mech, but not quite. Enemy team are currently in the process of staggering themselves as well, which is very helpful for us, considering they've only got one fight left anyway, so if they want to stagger themselves, please do. It would be of great benefit. Like, look at Lucio dying at, like, the absolute worst time possible, because they're regrouping over there right now, and Lucio has only just died right before the final team fight. So, we've got Valkyrie. We really don't want to die before the fight starts. Uh, I'm not really sure why we GA forward right here, because there's no reason to do so. Junkrat's bombs are real slow, so you can just kind of dodge them, and we end up GAing closer to the enemy team, which is bad. So, at this point, we have effectively won, because we still have a minute and 40 seconds on our timer. So if they finish in overtime, they do not get the time extension, because this is a hybrid map. And if it's a hybrid map, one team finishes in overtime, the other team has more than a minute left, no extensions are given. So we are now effectively in a position where we cannot lose anymore. The, be the worst case scenario for us at this point is we draw, which I always find to be a very liberating, a very liberating feeling, being like, ah, can't lose anymore, can just draw. And, you know, drawing doesn't feel good, but it feels a lot better than losing at the same time, right? So there... Done, by the way, as you might be able to tell, it's not going to work out for them. They lost the they lost the game, which is sad for them. And uh, so, two CP and hybrid maps can end up being very sad. Or it's like, oh, if we if they got it there in overtime, you're like, well, now they have to defend for almost two minutes, and the best hope they can the, like the first tick for two minutes almost, and the best they can hope to do from that position is draw. It's such a depressing situation. Here's Genji getting his play of the game, as expected, yep. Kill it. Wasn't really that incredible, but, you know, he touched a lot of people. 18 Dragon Blade kills out of 9 Dragon Blades. That's not incredible, it's just kind of what I would expect the number to be. It's quite a few, it's quite a lot of Dragon Blades, though, for your average match, though. Especially, it only went two rounds, thinking about it as well. Nine Dragon Blades across two rounds is pretty good. Um, so, it's just like two kills per Dragon Blade, which I mean, doesn't sound incredible, but like, that's basically exactly what I would expect. At least two kills out of every Dragon Blade. So, um, things that stand out the most in this game, basically positioning, where we're not thinking about where we're standing, we're doing backing up into the enemy team, which is a no-no, and just... Being too close, GAing closer to people we don't need to be near, backing up into people. Bad times. Positioning, broadly speaking, was the biggest thing in this game. So thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer, and I hope you found the video helpful.